Ever wanted to make the buttons on your shop more interesting, add more urgency? Well, in this video, we're going to have a look and see how we can change the buttons to something more interesting. So in order to do that, we'll head over to WooCommerce. And in WooCommerce, I've installed a plugin called Booster. And in that Booster, we have a whole range of options available to us. So we're going to look at the buttons and price levels. And the first one that we're going to have a look at is the Add to Cart button labels. Click on Settings to access the settings. You'll see that all modules are disabled by default. So we'll enable that module. And we'll enable per category labels. In the per category labels, we can create groups. And in these groups, we can assign categories so that those groups then take on the same characteristics. In the first category, we'll add accessories and we'll add hoodies. Those are winter clothes. And in group number two, we'll have a look at adding music. With that done, we will save the changes. So whatever we add now to the button text for single product view and archive will then be applied to accessories and hoodies. As it is winter, let's say stay warm today for the single product view and for the archive view, we'll say stay warm. For the music, we'll add the button text of great music today and great music. That way we can differentiate, we'll hit save. We'll then move over to the front end, refresh the page. Page refreshed, you'll see that the buttons have changed. We have great music and stay warm. If we have a look at the single view of the product, you will see that it says stay warm today. And similarly, if we look at the music page, we'll see that album also now says great music today. So that could obviously be whatever text that you want to appear on that shop page. There are ever more settings that we can have a look at. So the first section really looks at assigning buttons to specific categories. We can also have a look at per product labels. That allows us to change the labels at product level. In this case, let's see beanie with logo. Maybe we'd like to change that. And on this product, we will say in the single product view, add a logo today and we'll just change it to add a logo in the category view it's update view the product and you'll now see that we have add a logo today and if we head back to the shop you'll see we have add a logo now that we've change the product values at product level. Let's see what happens if we go in and remove the accessory from the group. So these were global settings that we had at category level. We'll go back, we'll refresh the page and you'll now see that the categories default back to add to cart. However, changes made at product level remain. So just Bear that in mind if you do make a change that anything you do at product level will still be in place even if you remove those settings at category level. So that was looking at category level. We've had a brief look at the per product, but we can also do it by product type. We'll enable this section and you'll see at the moment that on simple product we have add to cart, add to cart and then read more if there are any Variations on the variable product, we have select options. On, we don't have any external products, but there we have buy product. And on the group product, we have view products. We'll save those changes and let's just have a quick look at the defaults as they appear. So now that we have the categories on simple product, we have add to cart, add to cart, view products, select options. So everything else is pretty much the same as it was. Let's go back to the simple product. And instead of add to cart, we're going to change that to add to basket.
And what we'll also do, because included in the setting, is we can also then change for sale items. So for sale items, we will say add to sale basket. And we'll leave it on sale cart on the category view. Now when we update the information, refresh the page, you'll see that those product type settings will now apply. However, <clears throat> the category settings remain as they are and single product settings remain as they are. Anything that wasn't allocated into the category settings will now say add to basket, add to basket instead of the add to cart default. Let's have a look and see what happens then with an item that's on sale. You'll see that the sale item in the back end we said add to sale cart and add to sale basket. And if we have a look here, you'll see that we now have add to sale cart and if we click on the individual item, it will say add to basket. There's another setting that comes into play on sale items. Should I add this to my basket? Right there, I've added it to my basket and I refresh the page. You will see that the label on the button goes back to add to cart. That's here in the settings where already in cart, single product view, already in cart, product category view. What we can then do is say, already added to basket. So now any item that we've purchased will say already added to the cart. Hit enter to save. Head over back to the front end, refresh the page, and you'll see that we now have a label that says already added to basket. The prices, however, are added using Ajax, so that label won't change until the page is refreshed. There is another anomaly that might crop up, and that would be if you have a product, say, with the price of zero. If we have a look here in the settings, there is an option then for products that don't have a price. So a product with a price set to zero, we can now create a button for those two. Now, we could say, for example, price coming, price coming soon. just to let people know that the price will be there soon. Save the changes, we'll head over to the front end and then on this polo, we will change the price to zero. Regular price zero. Update the details. We'll then view that product. Price coming soon. So people can then see that the price is on zero, but they're also informed that there will be the price coming soon. So that's how we can have a look at changing the product details by product type. In that case, we were looking at the simple product. The same thing can be done for variable product, external product and then for group product. So here for example we could on the view group products on the single view and in the category view we could say view all products included. Save that. Now when we refresh the page and we go down to our group product, which is this product over here, we can say view all products included. We have a look at that at individual level and we now have view group products. So the nice thing now is that on the individual product view, I don't want to say view group products because 
we're already viewing them and I can go to single product view and say add products to to basket head back to the front end add products to basket so the nice flow there looking at it in category view we have view all products included and when we're looking at that group product add products to basket just makes a little bit more sense to the for the person who's there to buy let's head back to the settings page then we've had looked at simple and the variable products we could select options is good but if we wanted to uh, make it more personal we could say personalize your purchase and add to basket let's have a look at that we'll then go down to our variable product Personalize your purchase, which is on a V-neck t-shirt. You might want to put in your own size. And here then we have the add to basket. So that is how you would customize a variable product. Once again, a nice flow where you hear you're saying add to basket. And on the previous screen, you're inviting the customer to personalize your purchase great well that has a look at a quick overview then of what's possible with the button right well I hope you enjoyed that maybe got some ideas of how you can change the buttons on your site to be a little bit more appealing to your customers thank you for watching